Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about multiplying a whole number by a fraction. So when students are learning how to multiply a whole number by a fraction, a lot of times we think this is such a simple um, process that we just teach kids procedurally to multiply the whole number by the numerator of the fraction, which it is the correct procedure. They are multiplying three times two to get six, and they would get six fifths as an answer in improper fraction form. But I just wanted to encourage you to help students understand this conceptually before just teaching them a procedure. And if you show them this conceptually, they'll, they will figure out on their own the procedure of multiplying the whole number by the fraction. So first, I will start with talking about like what is multiplication with your students and they would um, explain to you that multiplication is finding groups of equal amounts. So this shows us that we have three groups of two fifths. <clears throat> so again, you could use those unifix cubes to represent that, that you have three groups of two fifths. And your students would also make the connection that multiplication can also be solved using repeated addition. And they'll see two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths, that this is three groups of two fifths. It's also important to talk to students about how multiplication has the commutative property and how these factors can be flipped and it also could be written as two fifths times three. And it means the same thing, okay, because of the commutative property. So students would be able to see two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths and that that equals six fifths. Now you may choose to ask your students to leave that an improper fraction or you may ask them to change that into a mixed number. But at this point, they know how to do that. So they know how to make a whole, a whole would be five fifths. So they're able to see if they combine the two fifths and then one fifth, that they have five fifths and one fifth. So they know that six fifths is equivalent to one and one fifth. Most of my students, because I've built this process of going from an improper fraction to a mixed number conceptually, they can do it in their head very quickly. Okay, so another reason that I encourage you to help your students understand this conceptually is because when they are faced with other problems that they haven't directly seen before, they're able to problem solve a little bit better and use the things that they do know and they do conceptually understand and apply those concepts in a new way. So for example, let's say that students were given the problem three times two and two fifths. Okay, so now they can't just say, oh, I multiply the whole number by the numerator because now they have a mixed number. Now they could, they could change this into an improper fraction and then multiply the three times improper, the numerator of the improper fraction. Um, that might be a strategy that they would consider since they know how to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. But if you're looking at this with the visual models, they know also that this means three groups of two and two fifths. So they could show two and two fifths. Remember that they know that a whole is made up of five fifths because that's the denominator. So again, we have two and two fifths and then two wholes and two fifths. So they're able to see that this is the same as two and two fifths plus two and two fifths plus two and two fifths. <clears throat> then they can combine those amounts, the equal groups. So you have two, four, six wholes, okay? And then we have two, four, six fifths. Now, they know that that six fifths right here is in proper fraction, it has a hole in it. So then they can regroup and they can show that if you take that six fifths, it gives you one and one fifth. So they're able to see that they have a total of seven holes and one fifth. And they're able to solve that knowing that this means three groups of two and two fifths and that they can show that with repeated addition. Okay, also this kind of helps them see that distributive property. If they wanted to think about three times, well they know that two and two fifths, the mixed number, is 
a whole number with a proper fraction and that really you're adding the two wholes with the two fifths that plus sign is sort of just invisible but that's what two and two fifths means two plus two fifths and they know that they need to do three groups of two so here they can see that as multiplication three groups of two three times two is six and then three groups of two fifths and they can know that three groups of two is six again so we have six fifths and then you have six and six fifths and at this point again they would see this has a hole in it and they would decompose it to see the one whole and one fifth. And then they can show that that's six plus one whole, which is seven plus one fifth. Okay, so just helping students, even though this is this can be very simple for students to just multiply the whole number by the numerator of the fraction and move on, it's still important that our students understand why that works and that so that they have that knowledge that they can apply if they see if they're see a new situation that they haven't seen before, then they're able to apply the knowledge that they have in that new situation. So I hope this helps. Um, I look forward to sharing more uh, math tips with you in the future. And um, this week we'll be having a special guest who's gonna share about some uh, tips for math in first grade. So um, keep following our videos and share them with others. The hope is that this will help students and parents and teachers to uh, find ways to help students conceptualize math so that they um, build a strong foundation in it because number sense is going to help them um, later in life and it's going to help them with their um, with their math uh, in, in future grades.